Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon, and apparently, apparently, D&D uh, &D keeps failing its skill check. Uh, this article came out on Polygon yesterday, and we're talking about D&D &D and racism again, and they're bringing up a relatively small Twitch channel as a shining example of how to be anti-racist in D&D. &D. Why are we still having this conversation? Hasn't Wizards of the Coast destroyed its it's cred enough already trying to make these people happy. And by these people, I mean these journalists and a handful of people on Twitter and Tumblr who are perpetually outraged. Uh, haven't they spent enough time trying to do that? Haven't they destroyed their business? Haven't they cost themselves hundreds of millions of dollars? So we're gonna, we're gonna talk about this. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture, news, views, and rants. Guys, no woohoos today, Geeky Sparkles, sitting this video out, but you had 25 minutes of uh, geeky sparkles before this video so you know you got your you got your geeky quota today right right i know you can never have enough geeky sparkles and, and neither can i hey speaking of never getting enough shadow binders volume three is coming next summer you can secure a copy now go out to shop clownfish Dot com and let us know you want more shadow binders if you like dungeons and dragons and you like fancy role-playing games uh, you'll probably like Shadowbinders, steampunk, fantasy, and romantic comedy. This is the third volume, the first new Shadowbinders content in about a decade. Um, so go out to shopclownfish.com. Speaking of tabletop games, go out and sign up to be notified when we're ready to give you more information on Adventure Engine. Uh, this may or may not be somewhat uh, adjacent to or or uh, uh, involved with the Shadowbinders IP. We'll, we'll see what happens. AdventureEngine.net is where you can go to sign up to be notified. This is a tabletop RPG system that we are working on with uh, some friends of ours, and we're hoping to bring it to you soonish. Soonish. We're going to be doing some alpha tests here pretty soon of some different uh, different game mechanics. It's not a one to one D and D clone, but uh, it should be a lot of fun, especially if you're a newer player and you think that D&D &D is too complicated. They keep making D&D &D more complicated by dragging politics, current year politics, and uh, critical race theory and, and all of that into D&D. &D. Basically, Tabletop has been kind of commandeered, I think, by the Tumblr crowd. That's a very different crowd from uh, you know, what played back in the day when, when uh, we played, when we were uh, you know, a bunch of metalheads and dorks that were getting made fun of in school. For playing D and uh, I don't think a lot of these people would approve of uh, Eddie Munson from Stranger Things, even though a lot of people uh, claim to like Eddie Munson and identify with him. I can almost guarantee you that they probably would not get along very well with him or his group. So, again, here we are. It is uh, 2023. Wizards of the Coast has gone out of its way to try to make these kinds of gamers happy. And apparently it's never enough. Now, I don't think this particular channel, don't, don't contact these people, please don't contact these people, right? Uh, I don't think they put themselves on the radar the way that Polygon put them on the radar. When you've got journalist Samantha Puck, who you'll probably remember from God, like every damn geek blog out there, I think uh, Samantha Puck has written for but Samantha Puck is kind of putting them in the crosshairs and making them the poster child for uh, Dungeons and Diversity, right? It's a transplanter, transplanter RPG. Uh, while D&D reckons with its racist past, this actual play is way ahead of the curve. Now, I did uh, check out a little bit of their podcast. It's not for me, but that's fine. It doesn't have to be for me. But it basically talks about how they started the podcast, how they started the Twitch channel, and it's, you know, pretty middle of the road. It's like, hey, here's why they start it, how they start it, why they do what they do. And then, of course, we get one, two, three, four, four paragraphs in, five paragraphs in. Although Transplanter RPG technically started as a D&D &D show, Chang used their education in screenwriting and critical race studies to immediately dismantle most of the core concepts of Wizards of the Coast infamous rule set. Till recently, the system had built-in racial traits and dice modifiers for its various races, including lower intelligence stats for orcs and a propensity toward evil 
for the dark-skinned drow, which are a type of elf. They're dark elves. They live underground, and most of them are bad. Uh, that historically, they've been the bad guys, but whatever. D&D publisher Wizards of the Coast has come under significant fire in the past few years for perpetuating racist stereotypes and imagery in this fantasy world, in particular, anti-blackness. Anti-blackness. Last year, the highly anticipated 5th edition release of Spelljammer included a race created in 1982 called the Hadozi, which were the, the monkey people. Let's look at the monkey people. Look at the racist monkey people, everybody. The racist monkey people. Apparently, the problem was, as I understand it, their backstory involved uh, them being a, a slave race or something, and then they kind of fought for their independence, and some of them dress up like bards and minstrels. I guess that was the problem, right? Uh, this was a huge step backward for wizards. Yeah, they said they're formerly enslaved simian creatures. It was a huge step backward for wizards, which came out against racism and owned its role in perpetuating it during BLM protests. It's like they're the grand wizards of the coast. Am I right? Am I right? Following the Spelljammer controversy, wizards apologized and revised, uh, revised the data for the Hadozi and the Spelljammer Adventures in Space set as a whole in the free PDF. Cultural consultants now play a bigger role in reviewing content for D&D books prior to publication, but many people began stepping away from the system even before Spelljammer. Now, they mostly started stepping away because of the bullshit with the OGL. And because of the change in demographic that basically D&D now is for theater kids. It's for woke theater kids. Can I say that? Because that's what I'm seeing a lot of. And there's nothing wrong with that if you want to play. Everybody can play the game they want to play. But the thing is, is that Wizards has spent the last probably 10 years chasing this audience. And I think a lot of it's because of Critical Role, you know. And they've been chasing this audience, and uh, they've been chasing off the old heads. They've been chasing off the OG players. They've been chasing off, you know, the, the people that spend hundreds of dollars at a clip on miniatures. And they've been going to other game systems, you know, Warhammer and OSR, and, and uh, maybe, they'll, maybe they'll go to Adventure Engine. AdventureEngine.net. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if they're going to. Um, I don't know if we're crunchy enough. I don't know if we're beefy enough for the hardcore players. But anyway, here we go. The D&D &D text itself is extremely troubling. And I think there's been a reckoning in the past couple of years from Wizards itself. They are aware. And I think they're trying to change for the better, Chang says. Now, Chang is the one that uh, runs the podcast, who is the uh, critical race studies major or whatever. Um, Chang also notes that the Transplanter RPG doesn't stand for many of the decisions and declarations made by the publisher. When it comes to building a world that is non-colonial, anti-orientalist, and rooted in an anti-racist understanding of fantasy, you really have to interrogate, interrogate what fantasy is from the ground up. So this is the same group that has a problem, a fundamental problem with Tolkien. And I think it's all kind of congealed. That basically uh, any any medieval fantasy is inherently racist, and uh, I've seen lots and lots of articles about this in the last ten years, and it's a, it's a pretty recent concept, I think. Uh, I mean, there have always been people that have complained about Tolkien or about fantasy, but you know, as far as like actually actively trying to get publishers to change their content. And going to the media with it and just being like, you know, it's a racist game. Then why are you playing it? You know, brew your own system. I, I don't know. Why, why is everybody playing it? If it's such a problematic game, why are you all playing it? I don't understand. We think about people in our world and their relationship to each other and what conflict could look like without racism. Which a lot of people insist can't work. Well, when you keep bringing it up, I'm just saying, devil's advocate. When everything is racist and you look for racism everywhere, even if there isn't inherent racism in it, it's kind of hard to imagine a world without it because you hear more about racism now than you did in decades past, at least since I've been alive. Uh, you know, there's always been an underlying uh, kernel of, of racism and racial divide, but we've never been as divided as we have been in the last couple of years because that's all anybody talks about especially in the tabletop space. That's basically all they talk about. Just kill more monsters, eat more pizza, have more fun. That's all you got to do, right? 
So look, I mean, you can you can play however you want to play. That's fine. But I, I just the media is really going hard at Watsy for the racism angle, which there are a lot of things. There are a lot of things you can be hypercritical of Watsy about. Their business practices are garbage. But I could argue pretty effectively, I think. I could argue pretty effectively that they have gone overboard in trying to overcorrect for things that maybe aren't that big of a deal. I do believe that, you know, some language is going to change over time. D&D is, what, 50 years old? 50 years old now? Things are going to change, you know, things are going to change, understandably. But I think there's been a massive overcorrection. And, you know, the problem is when you push too far in one direction, you get pushback that is equal, if not uh, more so. And and I, we've seen that. We've seen that with a lot of people, uh, you know, bristling anytime you bring any of this up, you know, uh, anytime a, a publisher like Wizards makes a statement, a public statement, you know, hey guys, guess what? We're not bigots and we don't rape people either. You know, anytime they do that, you push your audience away. And, and Wizards is going to die a death by a thousand cuts, just like Disney. It's a big company. It's the biggest company out there, but they're getting it from all sides. They're getting it from their investors over magic and over producing magic. They're getting it from D and D fans or the OGL. Remember the Pinkerton debacle? Yeah, that was over magic cards. It was over magic cards that a small ish YouTuber got early and posted online and they sent the damn Pinkertons to their house. Would you trust Somebody who's going going out there making statements about how to be the good guys, how to be anti-racist, how to be whatever, when they'll send the fucking Pinkertons to your house. I'm just saying. I don't think I would trust. I don't think I would trust them with anything at this point. But none of this matters. I mean, at the end of the day, I think most uh, tabletop gamers are moving away from D and D. They've basically made it very clear that they want to turn it into a shitty mobile app that they want D&D to basically be the brand, to be a video game. But as far as actual tabletop goes, people are moving on to other systems in droves. And so really, at the end of the day, none of this really matters because D&D has become the catch-all phrase for every fantasy tabletop game. And most people are kind of loosely playing D&D anyway. I mean, that's the thing too. Like a lot of these people who came into D&D from Tumblr, uh, started playing Baldur's Gate 3 and they're like, oh my God, there are rules and you can die. What? It's like, no, that's how you actually play d and Yeah, I'm sorry. That's how you actually play it. I'm just getting really tired of reading these articles, you know, in regards to D&D. And it usually is like, well, current year d and is good, but old d and is bad. Gary Gygax d and is bad. TSR d and is bad. You mean the product, the brand that was worth the money that Wizards paid for it? because it had a massive uh, player base. It was the tabletop RPG. It was huge in the 80s. It had the brand recognition. Uh, that's problematic. Why did you buy it? Why didn't you just make your own from the ground up? You know, why did you buy it and turn it into something else? And that's, that's what happens with all these corporations. They buy things and they turn them into something else. And it's always done by committee. It's always done. They chip away at it a little bit at a time. And here we are, sensitivity readers, and, uh, you know, all this jazz and D&D has had its teeth pulled out of it. But apparently it's not enough for some people. Some people just want it to be incredibly bland, boring uh, game. And uh, we can't have it offend anyone, especially now that they're pushing it in schools, you know. But uh, I digress. I'm going to wrap this up. I just thought it was interesting that we're talking about this again like it's 2018. But uh, it's the day of reckoning, guys. It's the day of reckoning. This is what you wanted, Wizards. This is the audience that you wanted, and you got it. Uh, Good luck with that. They're going to eat you alive. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later.